Okay, they, these are just my uh, views on duality and take what you want, leave the rest. Um, so you've got to recognize levels of consciousness and I would say as well there are like avatars and uh, avatars, enlightened teachers, saviors who are um, like for example um, Jesus Christ, Buddha, Krishna, um, my teacher Dr. David R. Hawkins. So now at a certain point you go to the thing of non-duality, non there is no other. There is, that's just an illusion that there is such a thing as another. But I would say that um, uh, for me there is no duality in saying, for me saying like uh, uh, Jesus Christ is my teacher, Dr. David R. Hawkins is my teacher, Buddha is my teacher, and non-duality in the sense that for me, it's the thing of, it's, it's, um, it's to transcend the ego from non-duality, i.e. there is no such thing as a me and a you, there is no such thing as a this and a that, uh, and there is no me that is speaking to a you. So that's non-duality or oneness or trans transcendence of duality. However, um, to note, you know, it's like, um, like the first levels of enlightenment, 600, you've got, you've got the different levels of the non-dual. So you've got levels of non-duality, there's the void, where there's infinite peace and stillness, there's infinite love, there's the feelings of oneness, so there's even gradations of the non-dual. So just to intuitively, I'm not saying from a level of uh, the ego, but from an intuitive level, to have respect, or even to have prayers, because like, like a prayer, like I could say, I'm praying to the Holy Spirit for a miracle. So then that brings up, and, and the ego can go, oh, that, that means you're doing, a, you're doing a dualistic prayer. There's a you praying to the Holy Spirit. So there's like lots of things going on there. In truth, there is no such thing. This is all separation and illusion. But the thing is, for me, a prayer could be said, and there's no one saying it, you see. Uh, and also the prayer could be an intuitive recognition, not in a dualistic sense, that it's still wise for the words to be said even though no one's saying them, like I pray for a miracle to see it differently. So there is no, there is no uh, secondary voice or me or another voice saying, well this is stupid because in truth it's an illusion and there is no this and that in absolute truth. So for me, um, I would, um, pray in using words that sound dualistic but for me it's like I pray all the time and it's like you've got to understand what is praying not you know like if, if words are said who is saying them you know like words can be said and nobody's saying them and uh, so they're just coming out they're just coming out of, out of the infinite and they're being said to the infinite so, but it's also to bear respect to, as I sort of see it, for me, in this world, it's a world of duality, or it's a, it's a world of lessons. So if you have people like Jesus Christ, Buddha, Krishna, there is wisdom in, or the Holy Spirit in calling on their aid, even when you get pretty advanced, and unless you were to go higher than that, which is not going to be... So, I don't know if there's clarity. I mean, it's like the avatars that reach level 1000 you know have gone to such a far place and their hearts are for the salvation and the enlightenment of all humanity that just, i mean and for me we come often it comes from a mysterious place of the ego going well intellectually you know that in truth it's non-dual and there is no other so you don't want to do this you better not do these prayers because you're beyond that because you understand it well it's different to understand it uh, and then to be it. And even if you think you are it, you might not be it. Because even if you get to the most sublime states, there may be further states of the infinite that you can reach. And that by having the humility, and there's no you that has humility, it's like it's coming out of nowhere, the intuitiveness to have respect for those who hold out you know, the intention for all of humanity to be freed. 
So there is something in that. So sometimes it can be, and I know the ego is going to find this very difficult, um, that if you use dualistic language, uh, that's not appropriate. But it's like, who's saying that it's not appropriate? And what are you that's speaking? So it might be, you might, there might be nobody that's speaking those words, and yet they're still appropriate. It's like the infinite speaking to the infinite. Uh, but there also is a recognition, like I don't claim to be higher than uh, uh, Buddha or Krishna or enlightened. So even if I temporarily feel, um, I feel like I'm in non-dual states of infiniteness and no thought and silence, um, there's something intuitive no that knows that those great avatars, it's, uh, it's, it's wise to have respect for them um, uh, and not cut that off even if one gets to sublime states. Because for me, that can sometimes be just the ego, not being willing to call on God, or call on Jesus Christ, or call on, on Buddha, and Krishna, and such like. So I, I, I would say, um, if a prayer is said, it can be that no one's saying it. But I think, you know, this thing of, um, uh, the, the thing of like this voice suddenly saying, well, you know that in truth it's a non-dual world, it's an infinite world, and all of this is an illusion. So uh, the, don't, it's nonsense to say the prayers. But it's like um, prayers can be said and it can be nobody saying the prayer, but it's intuitively, no, no one's there, but intuitively those words get uttered. So it, it, there's different levels in which words and languaging can be used. And there can be different contexts in which the ego has been very cunning in saying, well, don't call on Jesus Christ, don't call on Buddha, because you know it's not true. Well, you intellectually know it's not true, but it might have been wise for you to pray those prayers, even though intellectually you know there's something beyond them. Okay, I'll